Good morning, and welcome to Christ Church. I'm Betsy Spies, your liturgist for today, and we are glad that you have joined us in worship this morning. This week, we are invited to keep Jesus' commandment to love one another is to keep each other in our hearts. Every week, we remind ourselves why we gather. We are forming a habit of spending time together, breaking bread together, praising God together, and having goodwill for all the people. In the account of the early church, they did just that. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. Let's center our hearts together as one this morning by taking a deep breath. I invite you to place your hand on your heart and lightly tap in a slow heartbeat rhythm and join me in the call to worship. Holy living God, heartbeat of creation, help us take this time to center on you. For you made us, you gave us life. You continue to be with us every moment, every breath, every step, amen. amen. Take another deep breath and pick up your heart stone. As you touch it, remember that God's touch is with us in this moment, as close and real as this stone is in our hands right now. We light our candle now and set our heart stone next to it, letting go of our worries for now into God's heart of love. And as we do this, let's join together in our hymn of praise, This Is My Father's World. Let us be in the spirit of prayer. Blessed Lord, we come together this morning from many different places, and though we are distant from each other, we are still connected to one another and connected to you through each of our hearts. We give you praise for blessing us with this day, a day to worship you, to love you. Open our eyes to see the beauty and the joy and the blessings that you are placing in our lives. 
We pray that we will deepen our understanding of these blessings within ourselves so that we can share them with family and friends and strangers. Be with us, God, as we listen for your word, as we give you praise and glory together as one body, as children of our God. May we listen and hear your voice in our lives. And now may we bring joy to you as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our praise response is my tribute. Good morning, everyone. So glad you're with us. Here we are together in our separate homes again today, worshiping our Lord Jesus Christ and keeping him in the center of our hearts. And we keep all our friends in our hearts. We keep hope in our hearts. We keep gratitude in our hearts. We keep the spirit of truth in our hearts. And that's the heart of our message this morning. As we break bread together, let us bless our meals by praying together. Holy and living God, we gather in your name, invited by Jesus, bound together with your spirit, in union with each other. Feed our bodies and our spirits with your comforting presence so that we might be your comfort to others. Bless this food and break open our hearts. Bless this drink and pour out your love. Amen. And now I invite you to pick up a plate of food and let's offer the word of gratitude, the one word that's at the heart of the matter of every table blessing we offer. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. And as we break bread together in our separate homes, let's break open the word in our scriptures for the morning. In our first reading from the Gospel of John, Jesus tells his disciples that the Spirit will be with them even when he is gone. Today's scripture is from John 14, verses 15 through 21. If you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you, and you will be, and he will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live you also will live. On that day you will realize that I am the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Sometimes doing the right thing is difficult, and it means making sacrifices to make sure we do not harm others. 
We do it because love is the commandment we live by. In our next scripture, we hear an excerpt from an early church letter in which the apostle encourages the people to always be ready to share from their hearts about the source of hope that is within them, Jesus the Christ. Who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better if it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the Spirit. How do we sanctify Christ as Lord in our hearts? To sanctify something is to set it apart as holy. Holiness resides within each one of us, and it calls us to see holiness in others. It calls us to do the right thing in the name of love, even when the right thing isn't easy. Sometimes the right thing and the hardest thing is to follow the commandment to love our neighbors as ourselves. We often focus about loving our neighbor, but we almost hear this, we have to hear the second part too, to love ourselves. The Spirit is in us, Jesus says, and to love ourselves is to love God, and to love the Jesus that's within each of us, to love the Spirit that is our companion, our helper, and our advocate. Let us pray. Lord of our hearts, Lord of our lives, may these scriptures open within our hearts today your love, that more light and truth may break forth upon us this morning. Amen. Yeah. Uh-huh.
you've been missing my jokes over the past few weeks. And since my two daughters have both been home over the past week, I've been sharing a lot of really great dad jokes with them, and they call them bad jokes, but I thought I might share some of the best with you this, this morning. So first, why do you never see elephants hiding in trees? Because they're so good at it. What do you call a dad who lies about having kids? A faux pas. My friend said to me, what rhymes with orange? And I said, no, it doesn't. How many ears does Captain Kirk have? Well, he has a right ear and he has a left ear and he also has the final front ear. Boom. Did you hear about the kidnapping at school last week? It's okay. He woke up. Two cannibals are eating a clown. One turns to the other and says, does this taste funny? Well, all humor aside, let's get on with the serious business of keeping Christ in our hearts. Will you pray with me? Oh God, you have more truth, more light, ready to break forth from your word today. Speak to us, for we long to receive and understand your heavenly word. Amen. Orphaned, abandoned, lost. Some of you will know and remember Emily Wells, a child of this church, daughter of Brent and Debbie, who uh, adopted Emily from Seoul, South Korea, when she was a baby. Emily is producing a brand new podcast, kind of a serial radio program that you can listen to whenever you want out on the internet. Her show is called Adoption, The Journey of Becoming Chosen. She, write, she writes there and speaks of her journey toward wholeness and being adopted. And there's three episodes already available now on Spotify, iTunes, and other podcast apps. But Emily uses the first episode to introduce us to the idea of abandonment. She quotes a movie in which two students get into an argument on the dodgeball court, and finally one says to the other, as, as kind of a, a final moment of the argument, well, you're adopted, your parents don't even love you. Emily goes on to say the step that had to happen in a child's life before they become adopted, that step is abandonment. We had to be abandoned, she says, by the person who carried us for nine months, the person who potentially breastfed us or held us. Even that first moment in child development when the baby is just born, the baby is comforted, by, can be comforted by the smell and the heartbeat and the of the mother and the sound of their voice. It's the first way that we know what true love is. To be taken away from that, Emily reminds us, is a trauma. It's something that few of us really even understand. Imagine the mental and emotional side of that to always wonder, why did this happen? Why didn't you keep me? Why did she give me up? Did she not love me? Was I too much? Was I not enough? Did I do something wrong? Did I cry too much? Did I eat too much food? Did I make her too tired? I don't have Emily's experience. Not many of us do. And her complete journey hasn't been told yet. Just three episodes I've listened to so far. So I wade into these waters very carefully. But having known adopted and fostered children and those who have become adults, it is appropriate and so fitting that Emily began her story with this sense of abandonment. It, by the way, is her second life experience, her second significant life experience, the first being being born. And this abandonment has left its mark even as she celebrates and enjoys her fourth decade of life. 
I recommend Emily's podcast to you. Go find it, listen to it. Go with her on this journey of becoming chosen. I'm sure you'll be blessed when you hear her story, especially with such a close connection to her in this church. I suspect that while not to the existential level that Emily describes, many of us have at one time or another felt abandoned at some point in our lives and know what it means to be abandoned and to feel abandoned. The disciples were anticipating Jesus abandoning them, and in fact, they did feel abandoned. And that's clear in the Gospel of John. There, the disciples of Jesus have so much anxiety. They ask so many questions as they anticipate Jesus leaving them. In the 12th chapter of John, after realizing that even the outsider Greeks are seeking Jesus, Jesus begins to predict his own death. And then he gathers with them at a dinner and explains to them, that he would be leaving very soon. And he says this, he says, if you love me and you keep my commandments, and I will ask Abba, who will send you another advocate to be with you forever, and I will not leave you orphaned, I am coming to you. The spirit of truth, Jesus says, will reside within them, or as the original Greek literally says, will walk alongside them always to be with them forever. And it is this spirit, this holy spirit of truth, which led those disciples into the truth of the gospel of love. Think about the apostles and their lives after Jesus was with them, how they gave testimony to the power of the spirit of love. Peter expanding the gospel to be inclusive of every race, every nation, every tribe, every people. Andrew, carrying the love of God to the people in what is now Ukraine and Romania and Russia. Thomas, preaching as far east as India. Matthew, ministering in Persia and Ethiopia. Paul, taking Peter's idea of including all people in God's grace and running with it all over Asia Minor and even to the city of Rome, the very heart of the imperialistic beast. That same Holy Spirit resides within you, guiding you, goading you into doing what is right by others, loving your neighbor, loving the stranger, even loving your enemies by doing what is right for them. Methodist pastor and professor at Duke Divinity School, Will Willimon, relates the story of a little church, a little startup church in Alabama that had been saving for a decade to build its own church building and move out of the rented space where they had been Uh, holding worship for 10 years. And there was a couple in this church who, out of the goodness of their hearts, had fostered and were fostering four children. And one Sunday during the prayer time, this couple stood up and asked for prayers. They asked that they shared that the social service agency had asked them to take on three more children in addition to the four they already had. These three children had become homeless due to their family situation. And they asked the church for prayers. And the prayer they asked for was to help them find a larger place to rent so we can take in these kids. And with that, one of the oldest members of the congregation blurted out, we don't need to pray for that. Let's give them our building fund money so they can buy a house. And there was applause in the church. And they did just that. That very Sunday, the church gave their entire building fund to enable the family to have a larger home. Now that's a miracle. If you think about how church works, that's a true miracle of the Spirit. And such a miracle can only be attributed 
to having ordinary people pray, come, Holy Spirit, be upon us and be with us and walk with us. And to pray that way over and over and over and to pray that way without ceasing. The Spirit. The Spirit is the agent of God's kingdom. The Spirit is the way God keeps actively loving us in time, the way that the Trinity of God keeps showing up to us in the form of the Spirit, the Spirit of truth, keeps pointing us toward the truth embodied in the teachings of the crucified, embodied in the love of our Creator. I will not leave you orphaned, Jesus says. God will send the Spirit to be with you forever, to guide you in what is doing right, even if what is right is hard to do. And even as the author of the letter attributed to Peter says, even if you suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. So do not fear. Do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, honor Christ and let him alone be Lord of your life. May it ever be so. Amen. we come to a time of prayer let's remember friends and family that we're not able to be with during this time let's remember friends and family who have gone on before us to their heavenly reward let's remember each other in our community as we pray I remind you that after our service today we'll gather on zoom uh, to check in with each other and also to share more prayer concerns and updates about people we love. Let us pray. Lord, we are so used to coming to church out of habit and custom that we often come for the wrong reasons. We sometimes find it hard to give thanks, to sing praise, to abandon our worries and find joy in your Holy Spirit. And yet every time we turn to you, out of whatever reason, you are there, ever more ready to hear than we are to call upon you. Your loving kindness and mercy surround us continually, and the freedom that comes from you always transforms our plodding spirits. A 
Assist us now, O God, to pray aright. May we worship in ways that are pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We pray for the church in distant lands, O Lord of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation, whose persistent love is working among peoples of diverse race and culture. We praise you for the church, the body of Christ, made up of persons all over the globe who confess allegiance to Jesus Christ as Lord. Enable those of us who are so parochial that we cannot see beyond our own building and liturgy to sense the work of your kingdom among Christians whose politics and national affiliation are very different from ours. We pray for the churches in our community. Break down our pettiness, O God, and the individualistic spirit that draws us away from other Christians on our doorstep. Create within all of us who think of ourselves as the family of God in this community a sense of the unity that we have in Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to the forces and powers at work in this community which dehumanize and demean the human spirit so that we may have the intelligence and the creativity, imagination, and love to be your ambassadors among our neighbors. May we begin to care about and act upon the problems of poverty and ill health and injustice wherever they may be found. And we pray for people who work in schools. Lord Jesus, whose being expresses the way, the truth, and the life, we pray for our teachers and administrators, our students, and all the persons in our community who deal with the problems of education, even today, and more so. Grant to such persons a sound perspective in life, a humble spirit in the face of new and unfamiliar truth, an inquiring mind in the face of the unknown, and a gentle spirit in the face of harsh truth. May all who serve others in the name of learning point beyond themselves to the ultimate source of truth and beauty which lies in your heart. We pray through Jesus Christ our Lord and in the power of your Holy Spirit in whom our hope resides. And all of God's people said, Amen. Jesus told his disciples that he would not leave them orphaned. The spirit of truth will be with them and us forever. Where have you seen the spirit at work this week? In gratitude for the love we know through God's Holy Spirit, we give thanks through tithes and offerings. Thank you, as always, for giving as you can during this trying time. You are making a difference. Please join with me in prayer. Generous and loving God, we remember. We remember the others who have encouraged us. Many people have taught us. We have been forgiven. We have been loved. We admit that we haven't done it all ourselves. Our offering today is a response to all that has come before us. We pray that our money will be used to encourage, to teach, to forgive, and to love in Jesus' name. Amen.
As we close this time together, remember, God is always with you. The Spirit of truth will be with you forever. No matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way, God is right beside you. The companion, the advocate, is guiding and directing your path. So acknowledge your fear and your worry. Those feelings are as true and as real as ever. But also acknowledge your joy and the love that you receive and the hope. Take heart and keep Jesus in your heart today. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus go with us to guide us with the light of the gospel and to gather us into God's righteous and beloved community now and forever. Amen.